Okay, in this video, I'm going to look at, once again, we're, we're yeah, I'm doing this for my Langdon Park School students. I'm doing revision for uh, English Language GCSE Paper 1. Um, we're, doing, we're looking at the, uh, the explorations of creative reading and writing. And we're looking at the reading videos. In the last video, I showed you how to use the paper to carve up the question. Let's look a little bit more deeply at question two, which is the language analysis question. Um, all we're going to need here is what they tell us in the little box. So let's look. And the question, of course, too. How does the writer use language to describe the mountain? That's what we want to know. Okay. Well, let's read through this and decide. It's her first time in the Pyrenees. The Pyrenees are a mountain range, although she feels very much at home. She's been told that the winter, the jagged peaks, so the mountain, so right away, the jagged peaks of the mountain are covered with snow. In the spring, delicate flowers, pink and mauve and white, peep out from their hiding places in the great expanses of rock. In early summer, the pastures are green and speckled with yellow butter clubs. I'm using different colors because those are quite positive words. But now the sun has flattened the land into submission, turning the greens to brown. It's just um, burned up. The power of the sun has battered the ground into submission. It's a beautiful place, she thinks. It's somehow an inhospitable one. It's not one that's welcoming. It's a place of secrets, one that has been seen too much and concealed too much to be at peace with itself. Okay, so what we have here is language um, that describes the mountains. Let's see. We have jagged. We have um, flattened into submission. Inhospitable. Okay, in contrast, we have delicate peep out, um, speckled with yellow. And what we essentially see are these positive words contrasting with these. That's fine. There's one other thing we need to know. That is a metaphor. The sun is personified. <coughs> that is an image. This is in contrast. Right? So when you're doing this, the first thing you got to do is be able to recognize what's being asked of you. The next thing you have to do is recognize the relevant evidence. And finally, you're going to need some kind of um, topic sentence, which is going to be something like this. Um, uh, the writer uses imagery and metaphor to show the danger of the mountain, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to stand by that, but what I'm doing is I'm using my evidence to make my topic sentence, my point in the old money. This is then contrasted with the second topic sentence, which might be something like this. The writer contrasts the brutal power um, the mountains, mountain area, with beautiful description. Okay, so th those are your points. Now you have your evidence. Then, in the traditional way, we zoom into a word and we analyze language. What is analysis of language? This is something a lot of people have difficulty with. 
Analysis of language is going into the words and thinking about the associations they bring up to you. Why this word? What does this word mean? What does this word suggest? What does this word imply? Where does this word take you? Further, a lot of the language we use, um, uh, especially in literature, is it, it are used for a reason. There's a device. The writer's using uh, painting an image for you to make you feel something very specific. They're using a simile where they're comparing something explicitly to make you feel something. You've really got to think about the devices and what their effects are. So one way of doing that is to really burrow into a word like jag, let's say jagged, okay? This is the exercise I did. What does jagged mean? Um, what does it invite you to think about? What associations do you have? What could it mean? You just dig, dig, dig into this word, and that squeezing of meaning is where you get all your language analysis. Okay, that's your that's your peewee. Now, ultimately, with this question, if you can get two to three rich phrases, if you can zoom in on the words and squeeze them of their meaning, you're doing quite well. The really underrated steps, if which a lot of our students fail to do, is you just analyze without explaining what's actually going on. And finally, a lack of use of like actually discussing the device and its effects on the reader, the effect of the metaphor on the reader, the effect of the imagery on the reader, the effect of the simile on the reader. And you are a reader, so this makes me feel, this makes me think. This is essentially how you put a paragraph together. And I don't want to get into all this detail because now this video is going on a lot, but you should use this booklet that I've written to help you. Again, very classic way we have of language analysis is point, evidence, word, explain and analyze. And please notice they're intertwined process and that expand could be the effect. You, It's very difficult to write straight from the top and go down. What you want to do is start with your evidence and then move up. Okay, so starting with the evidence is really going to facilitate or make you be able to write these paragraphs. The second main thing is, remember, really go into a lot of detail into the language. That's what's really going to help you push you through this question. Again, you don't want to take too much time. It's only 12 minutes. So you got to read and annotate really quickly and then do one or two extended paragraphs with very deep analysis and consideration of effects. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about question three.